In this video, I'm gonna to react to the 10 biggest British stereotypes on American TV. Welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. This is the place where I react to music, media, sports, anime, anything related to popular culture. I'll watch it with an open mind and give you my 100% honest reaction to it. And if you could please hit that like button early, I'd really, really appreciate it. Now this should be fun because uh, <laughs> there's quite a few uh, stereotypes that, you know, Americans have for Brits, Brits have for Americans, you know, um, one, I imagine a, a, one of the most popular stereotypes of Brits is uh, that we all have bad teeth. <laughs> and um, I, uh, I showed my teeth, uh, I think in a video last week, and I was glad to, you know, to see that most people thought my teeth were okay. Like my teeth, are, I don't think they're, they're too bad. And um, probably another stereotype is that British people drink a lot of tea. We do drink a lot of tea. I'm drinking a cup literally as we speak. I'm thinking of American or British stereotypes of Americans. Uh, probably one of those is maybe um, Americans maybe are a bit louder than the average Brit. Um, what else? What else? What else? I can't really think. Maybe Americans dress more casually than the average Brit as well. But this video here, I'm like 10 stereotypes. I didn't even know there were, there were 10 stereotypes for Brits in America. So yeah, it just should be fun to, to watch. So let's go. This is going to be me reacting to the 10 biggest British stereotypes on American TV. Let's do it. We all love a bit of American telly, the high drama, the straight white teeth, but there are some things that as British people... What? Is that Richard, uh, Richard Branson? <laughs> He was on Friends, I had no idea. People really butter our crumpets. Hello and welcome to Watch Mojo UK. For today's list, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 British stereotypes in American TV. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be taking into consideration all of it. The annoying, often contradictory recurring tropes that come in the form of one-off or regular characters and more general characterizations. If you saw a picture of him and a picture of me and you were asked, who should be named Wesley Snipes? You pick the <laughs> pale Englishman every time, every time, Liz. <laughs> Number 10, we all talk like we're from London, mate. <laughs> if you're watching an American show with a British character, there's a high chance that they'll speak with either a Cockney accent yeah. or the Queen's English. Yeah, honestly, the amount of um, Americans on, on, like, uh, on memes that I've seen do the, can I get a bottle of water? <laughs> I think that's how they think they, that we all speak. And to be fair, quite a lot of people do sound like that, to be fair. And nothing else. Make with the tea, Jeeves. Yes, very good, sir. The former will depict someone from the lower class, naturally, and the latter, the upper crust, don't you know? In general, there's such a huge focus on London because, as is known in the colonies, the UK is just London <laughs> surrounded by fields. <laughs> You know, we're here to learn things, not fall in love. Perhaps it's a result of British gangster films or other productions painting an alternative picture of the supposed land of aristocracy. Or our regional favourites are just too tricky for our cousins to the left. If this guy is from England, why doesn't he speak English? Number nine, we're all emotionless, at least on the outside. On American TV, our keep calm and carry on wartime attitude still applies today, and our so-called stiff upper lip and reserved nature is rather readily displayed across the pond. To be fair, to be fair, I will say there is some truth to this. I think, yeah, the average Brit is probably a bit more reserved at first than the average American. Once you get to know that Brit, it completely changes. It, it completely changes. Nigel, yesterday I saw you smile. Is that something I need to bring up with my father? I was just imagining my own death, sir. <laughs> Embarrassment aside, according to our overseas cousins, we experience no feelings or affections. On the reverse of this, Americans are often portrayed as brash and forward, so perhaps it's retaliation. <laughs> what? Where the hell is this from? <laughs> 
What is this show? Or it could be our Victorian prudishness coming back to haunt us. Either way, it doesn't stop the spate of wry and unemotional British characters from further compounding the stereotype. So you're back, son? Aye. I suppose you'll be leaving soon. Aye. <laughs> Groundskeeper Willie. <laughs> Number eight, British lads oh. are all womanizing Lotharios. Those of us of the male persuasion who do have the confidence to talk to the opposite sex apparently have it by the barrelful, because <laughs> obviously we are all like Russell Brand. Fellas! I'm so happy you could make it. The stereotype that British men can just saunter across the Atlantic and pick up romantic partners with the power of their words alone shows that there is seemingly no middle ground between the shy and retiring and the aspiring <laughs> Romeos. <laughs> to be fair, I've got a mate who uh, who went to Virginia on a, on his gap year. He did a year at the, uh, I think, was it the University of Virginia or Virginia Tech? One of the colleges in Virginia. And uh, yeah, he had he had a great time out there. <laughs> he had a great time. He, he tried getting me to come over, but I couldn't because I was uh, I was working. But yeah, you know, there's something about the way he talks. I could listen to him read the phone book. It comes as part of the rock star image, which brought with it supposedly irresistible accents and flamboyant dress sense, all with an arrogant nature. Can I? Just a peak love. Number seven, we're all overly apologetic and polite. Okay, so the- <laughs> Look at his teeth. <laughs> That's a violation, man. This one is our own doing, as saying sorry is what we do best, oh, but it can God. still be irritating when it gets oh, overused on American teeth. television. Well, we're all out of time. Join us same time tomorrow if it's not entirely inconvenient for you. If so, of course, we do understand, and we do apologise in advance. This has all been an imposition. I'm so... Why are they all so hideous as well? Dreadfully sorry. 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 Sorry, everyone. The extent of British politeness is certainly over-exaggerated in American <laughs> comedies, with Family Guy predictably being one of the worst oh, offenders. Gosh. Whilst being polite and having manners and etiquette is ultimately a good thing, it gets to the point where it makes Brits look groveling. In fact, there are several countries that are generally considered to be more polite than the UK. Canada such as Japan, New Zealand, and Canada. So sorry, America, you're wrong. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, oh boy, sorry. 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 I could kill you with my thumb, you know. Number six, we're all hyper-intelligent. <laughs> there is no fog in London. There is no London fog. Watch a US TV show with a British character, and it's likely that... He was in Chernobyl, wasn't he? And has anyone seen the uh, the HBO show Chernobyl? I'm sure he was like one of the main characters. There'll be a doctor, professor, explorer, or some kind of intellectual with an Oxford or Cambridge education. You needn't look further than Stewie Griffin to see this stereotype in action. <laughs> To be fair, with the likes of Stephen Fry and Stephen Hawking amongst our best-known overseas outputs, it is hard to contest this one. And whilst it's a nice thought that people think we're all super intellectuals, it sadly isn't true. <laughs> Being British sure fits in, however, with the persona of a scheming and dastardly villain. Well, how noble. Number five, we're drunk all the time. Uh, what? What did you say? Danny one. Danny Wah, okay. Danny Wah. Danny Wah. Oh, oh, my God. Danny Wah. Danny Wah. Danny Wah. Danny Wah. We mean, who doesn't enjoy the odd drink? Yeah. Truthfully, however, we don't enjoy being drunk as much as the Americans may have the world believe. How much wine and beer per person? Oh, come on! No matter their position, whether it's Professor Ian Duncan in Community, a drunk and lonely professor played by the brilliant John Oliver, or the son of the richest man in the Seven Kingdoms, <laughs> they are partial to an occasional tipple. There's a big pub culture in the UK. Yeah, it's huge. Oh my God. Yeah, man. When I was at uni, I'd go out at least three times a week. So Tuesday, Friday, Saturday. And drinks were so cheap at the, at the uni bars. We're talking, there was this place called Jumping Jacks that had on Tuesdays, 80p drinks. You could get a beer, a bottle of beer for 80 pence. So you could go out with like a tenner, <laughs> get battered, and you've still got a, a bit of change for some like, for some chicken and chips. <laughs> 
Man, yeah, drinking culture here is pretty big. Big. But we don't all hang out in them 24-7. The Scottish are especially brutalised on American <laughs> TV, particularly poor groundskeeper Willie. My stomach is filled with haggis and hat. I've got to go puke and some hair. <laughs> Number four, we have bad teeth. Yeah, the go. big book of British smiles. This one is offensive on so many <laughs> levels. Contrary to what is shown on American TV, looking at you, Simpsons. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Hold on. Show <laughs> Look at the size of. <laughs> this is so rude, but hilarious. On American TV, <laughs> looking at you, Sim. Is this Charles? This is Prince Charles, isn't it? Since <laughs> and repeat offender Family Guy, oh, not all British God. people have bad teeth. Oh, is that right? So you fancy fags, do you? Well, here, have a old cotton of fags. I just want a comely lass to look upon me with favour. Perhaps compared to our whiter tooth companions, we might not seem as dentally obsessed, but the much said stereotype that our pillies aren't so white is downright unfair. It's rather a historical trope now, with dental care having improved drastically from the 60s and 70s, and it's even estimated that UK oral health is better overall than- This is the wild thorn breeze. This is such a classic cartoon, man. An American, as opposed to just having a clean appearance. Aren't you just itching with childlike curiosity? Number three, <laughs> we're all socially awkward. Spontaneous human combustion is, is rare and, and scientifically unexplainable, but there have been cases for hundreds of years. Usually all that's left is a pile of ashes. We have Hugh Grant to thank for this one, the 90s pioneer of the bumbling and awkward Brit. Throughout the decades, there have been a string of socially incapable British characters in American television, from those who are nervous and trip over their words, to others with extremely low self-esteem. The hell is this? Who oh, this? Uh, I remember. I didn't sign it. Like other picks in this list, this stereotype is often used in contrast to characters from the States who are depicted as much more confident <laughs> and outgoing, and the awkwardness is often a result of the characters trying their absolute hardest not to cause the slightest bit of offence. Sometimes I think I should just run away, but who would take me in? No one would house. No one. Number two, we're all working class hooligans. <laughs> hey, words are the wise. Daphne's in a bit of a mood tonight. According to Hollywood, those of us who don't have royal connections are, of course, working class. Cockney, of course. Mm -hmm. And when we aren't dwelling in self-pity, we're fighting about football. <laughs> this stereotype is more often than not very overdone, and there is even the odd northern accent attempted, albeit very badly. Choke on it! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, crikey! This trope usually involves boisterous and angry alcoholics who speak like someone straight out of a Guy Ritchie film. The lives of such characters are also shown as extremely miserable, almost peasant-like, something not too far removed from Fagin in Oliver. Our line of business pays a little better. Number one, we're all posh snobs with royal connections. Uh. So here we have it, the ultimate British stereotype found on American TV. However, the proper mode of address would be Your Royal Excellency Lord Edgar Darby Covington, 14th Earl of Cornwall upon Thames, 29th Baron of Hertfordshire. <laughs> It's regularly used as a go-to for easy laughs, with characters from Blighty being given long and ridiculous names. I've just realized there's so many TV shows that I've not seen. Gosh, so many. Like Lord Edgar Covington from Parks and Recreation, or Buzz Killington in, you guessed it, Family, Family Guy. Guy. <laughs> now, who here likes a Good story about a bridge. There's also an assumption that either we all know the Queen, or we have all at some point in our lives run into royalty, such as in the London episode of Friends, where they just happened to bump into Figgy, and everyone else was rude and dismissive. Hi, Chanda. That's, that was, oh my god. It's Fergie, baby! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this- That was pretty funny, to be fair. I mean, yeah, I was laughing a lot. Like, that Simpsons bit, the big book of British smiles <laughs> that the dentist showed to uh, Lisa. Or, no, was it Lisa? Or, um, oh, God, or Ralph. 
and it had Prince Charles in. And his teeth, his teeth looked like they were throwing up gang signs. They were like, <laughs> like that. Oh my God, so funny, so funny. You know, a lot of stereotypes, there are elements of truth to them. I do feel like British teeth have improved quite a lot over recent years, but this was really, really funny to be fair. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, turn on bell notifications, and keep throwing the recommendations my way. I know I say it all the time, but they genuinely help me out because if I know you enjoyed watching something, I'll definitely enjoy reacting to it. So like, subscribe, turn on bell notifications, Keep throwing the recommendations and I'll catch you in the next one.